a way to edit and not to be so kind of fooled by what's happening with science and technology and things like Tribata and PrEP. So we can have those conversations. I don't know that for us it's become the drumbeat that we're marching to, right? I think it's about acknowledgement and about conversation. So also the removal of the shame of the disease, the shame of like our sexuality. I mean, I think you, you uh, spoke of this earlier, how, like, how, why would you want to um, even think about your sexual health when, you, when you're taught from birth, everything about you is an abomination. So, of course I'm gonna die there. You know, I'm an abomination. Yeah, I'll take it back in. So, like, when you, when you have all of that going on, that's in your subconscious um, thoughts. Like, there's no thought about like having a conversation about you know, us loving each other, protecting each other, just wanting to us to live the best lives that we possibly can. So, yeah. So Tyra and Athena, <laughs> I ain't gonna ask you to to bring you into this conversation in an well, at least in my mind, I think it's interesting in an interesting way. Because as you just heard us particularly talk about the history of this epidemic, right? In relationship to black gay men. So that even in all the all of sort of the literature we have been engaged in around the lives of black gay men, there's still little data collected on black trans men. And you have a book called The Transsexual from Tobago that talks about not only your life story, but at the end of it, it memorializes 5,000 trans men that were murdered since 1990. And it seems like it so happens things that every day, or every week, we're hearing another black trans woman that's murdered or brutalized. What's also become happenstance is that we continue to hear that someone from the houseball community has died. So I'm wondering the significance of why you wrote what you wrote. And why do you think it's significant to other, not only to, to, to black trans folks, but to the larger house ball community and the larger black LGBT community and the large LGBT community in those three ways? To the house ball community, the large black gay community, black LGBT community, and the large LGBT community. Um, good evening. I am Dominique Jackson, um, but... <clears throat> Everyone knows me as Tyra Aloha Ross. I, um, I wrote The Transsexual from Tobago as therapy for me. It was supposed to be therapeutic. It was to help me to see my struggle from an objective uh, perspective. I was going through a lot throughout life. And what I turned around and realized was that people did not see my struggle. When you look at the trans woman of color, you do not think about the health, health risks that we have to endure. You do not think about how we're treated by society on a whole. We're almost put down at the bottom of the barrel. But we walk into ballroom and we glamorize everything. As you saw in the videos, you saw the necklaces and, and the sparkles and, and all that stuff. And I started to become a, a product of that, where all I, what people saw of me was the glamour, and they didn't understand and could not comprehend what was going on behind that. How did I get to that point? And that is when I decided to actually self-publish my book in March. Because in reading it, I realized that my story, rereading it, I realized that my story was not only about me, but it was the story of many of my transgender sisters and my brothers. Um, in the ballroom community, what I see is that we are the women that they will say to you, oh, it's over for you, you look kind, you look fish, you're great, and then see you outside and say to their friend, oh, that's a man. Um, and I began to feel out of place in war. As soon, um, the first thing that most gay men or women and women will go to is to take you back to what you were assigned at, your sex assigned at birth. The sex you were assigned at birth, what you see on your birth certificate, that M or that F, is your sex. It is not your gender. 
Gender is not determined until you get older. And the trans woman stands up, fights for everyone. We're the ones saying to you, we are living our truth. And my truth is in this book. And I took away the glam. I speak about sex work, which is something that most trans women in ballroom do. Most trans women on a whole, when you identify as trans and you come out, the first thing you're told is you gotta get a client and you have to put silicone and do implants and make your body what you want it to be. But what, they're not, what we're not told is how to go about that process. And the resources for us to get through that process are not available to us. So some girls will come across and they'll look as what we call better than others. Then you will have those that, and what we call that is realness or not real which is another thing that is totally destructive to the, to the psyche. When we walk into a ball and we walk that realness category, or we walk face, as a transgender woman who already knows, look, it's gonna be hard for me to get a man, he might kill me and get away with it because he's gonna say he didn't know. My gay brothers are gonna laugh at me or out me when I'm not on that stage performing for them. So my book took away the spectacle of what we are. The lashes, the hair, all that stuff. <clears throat> Beneath that, we're human. This is an attempt to humanize the transgender community. There are many transgender women out there who do much more than escort. And for the trans women of color, that is mostly at times, and for my generation, a rite of passage. You just had to get to that point and some stay there. I had to leave that alone because it was not for me. In here, when it comes to the larger community now, we're also a spectacle. Because now it's, that was a man, how did you do that? How did you get those breasts? How do you think it? Then they go to the, always the question, well, do you still have a penis or not? So people break down things about us, not realizing how discriminatory, how hurtful, how painful it can be. And what this causes is that you have one view of the transgender woman as this glamorized, beautiful creature, but you have no idea what's going on in here. You're facing rejection from family, especially in the, in the uh, communities of color. You are facing job discrimination. A transgender woman of color escorts or does sex work and she gets about 40 to $50, don't believe the lies. But a Caucasian or light-skinned Latina can do the same sex work and will make four to $500 in the same breath. We have doctors in our community, we have lawyers, but you don't see those. You don't see the Ayana Elliott. You don't see Jasmine Perez, LMSW. What you see are the girls on television and on reality shows and videos showing you only one side of us. This is another side. This is the truth about us. Hormone uh, replacement. Silicone injections, which kill us, eventually. The need and the want to feel and be accepted that we don't get. People don't stop to think of the transgender person as human. We are those things. What you hear is, well, at least I'm not like that. But we're the ones who started the revolution. There would be no Stonewall if it wasn't for us. So, and what was the other?